What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to today's edition of Free Tool Friday. My name is Tyler S. Clark, and what we are here to discuss with you is my top five takeaways from 1,362 coaching sessions with entrepreneurial accountants over the last year. As you can imagine, I've had a lot of really personal conversations about how to create your dream firm. So let's go ahead and jump right into what are those top five takeaways, starting with number one. And number one is related to the thing that I hear the most on every single call when it comes to growth, which is, Tyler, I have no time. So the takeaway is this, control your most valuable resource, which is your time. What's fascinating about this is that the clients that we have that grow and just smash their growth goals, whether it's 50,000, whether it's 100,000 and above, they have the same exact amount of time as everybody. And what they're doing is they're structuring access to their time in a different way. And they're making sure that they can stay hyper-focused on the things that matter the most to being able to deliver fantastic results to their clients, acquire new clients, and ultimately create their dream firms. If I could give you one tactical way to be able to do that, if you're not spending at least two hours a day working on your business instead of in it, as in no distractions, you do not have control over your most precious resource. You must do everything in your power to get a minimum of two hours per day, distraction-free, no email, no social media, no clients calling you, no text messages coming in, no distractions. And I assure you that will accelerate you significantly faster than you thought. And all of a sudden you'll go, I have all this time. Where did all this time come from? Yeah, that's the way that works. Number two is related to a question I hear all the time. Where are the good clients, Tyler? Where are the good clients? And really the question that should come before that is, where can I generate quality leads? Because that's what leads to good clients. But besides the point, the key takeaway is this, is that premium clients look for premium solutions. And here's the way I'd like to uh, give you an analogy or a little story to, to, to help understand what I mean by premium clients look for premium solutions. Another way to say premium solutions is a premium experience. Now imagine very quickly, if you went to the hairdresser and the hairdresser said, I only wash hair. You'd be like, okay, well, I can't really get my hair done. And then you went to another person and said, I only, I only do uh, highlights. That's all I do. And another person said, I only do cutting. You'd be like, but that hairdresser over there, they offer to wash my hair, to cut my hair, to style my hair, to do highlights. Um, I have a lot of highlights today. No, to, to dry my hair, right? Uh, they do all of that. And now it's a premium experience because the rest of the market if they try to just segment and splinter out, would say, oh, well, I only do this one thing. And it's like, but that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the end result. Now, when I say that, some people typically go, but Tyler, I only want to do one thing. I only want to do tax planning. It's like, that's okay, right? The hairdresser isn't the one washing the hair, typically. They're the one just cutting the hair, right? They have someone who handles that responsibility. And so the tactical approach to this is not how do you do this, who can help you to create a premium experience that clients would be more than happy to pay for, and therefore they are now premium clients. Number three, hear this all day, every day, and I think this is the one that um, the one that hurts me the most. And the reason it hurts me is because it's it's an underappreciation of all the time, energy, and effort you've put into developing your skill set. And so this is a this is I'm not ready. Okay. And so the takeaway from this, when you believe I'm not ready to offer a premium solution, the takeaway is <laughs> you're not one certification away from being able to take care of your clients. Okay. You're not one certification away from someone being able to grant you the ability or the right to deliver an amazing experience. And again, people come to me all the time. Oh, I'm getting ready to enroll in this. And it's like, is the market legitimately asking you to do this, right? Are they saying you need this certification to be able to deliver this service? They go, well, no. I'm like, so why are you doing it? It's like, because I feel like I can't do it. It's like, but if I took my credit card out of my wallet and I said, here you go, right? I'm a, I'm a client. I'm going to buy from, I'm going to buy this service from you. Are you capable of going and figuring it out, right? Are you capable of being able to solve that problem? Do you have the integrity 
to solve the problem of your clients when they're willing to pay you for it? Yes. So don't, don't push off growth because you say, I'm not ready. You are ready. And you will become even more ready by being willing to embrace things that make you just a tiny bit uncomfortable right now. And staying in certification and continuing to fine hone your technical expertise, while important, please don't get me wrong, is not what's going to allow you to create your dream firm. <sighs> number four, number four, number four. Um, this is probably comes up on, I don't know, about 70 to 80% of all my coaching calls, intro calls, not the ones that I do with our high level clients. Cause we we've solved all of these essentially at this point, but it's pricing, it's pricing, right? Uh, it's related to being able to price typically profitably and, or feeling like our prices are too low or not being able to quote or price for prospective clients without putting in all of our most precious resource or time to try and get to an accurate quote so that we don't get burned on the back end. So the takeaway is this, growth breeds growth. And what I mean by that is that in order for you to be able to offer a really premium experience, a premium end result where you are that growth consultant, where you are there looking at the numbers, coaching by the numbers, helping them to cut costs, knowing where they need to double down so that they can grow their business is really understanding that in order for you to be able to go and deliver that, you've got to be able to do that yourself. Right. That's saying, like, if I can grow internally, if I can grow my mindset, if I can grow my client list with premium clients, if I can grow my network, if I can grow even my skill set, right, not just my technical abilities, but my sales abilities, my marketing abilities, my ability as a leader, as an entrepreneur, right, my ability to hire and train talent and retain that talent and compensate that talent. Those are all different skills. And those are that's all an extension of growing your, you as the leader, right? Those come from you. And as soon as you do that, what happens? Keeps growing, keeps feeding back into itself. So again, key takeaway number four is growth breeds growth. If you have struggled to understand your own profitability and, and why and how to become more profitable yourself, it's really hard to then believe that you that someone would come to you and say, hey, can you help me with my profits and, and be able to control my accounting and control my costs? It's like, well, you have to believe your own promises because you know the power of them yourself. That's why we believe so strongly here at Dream Firms, not only because of what our clients see and do, but because we take our own medicine all day, every day. And then we have so much belief to go and say, you need this too, because look at what it's doing for us. Look at what it's doing for your peers. And this brings me to my fifth and final takeaway. And um, this one is very, very important for the entrepreneurial accounting community. Because I hear this, I hear this one a lot, which is uh, this fill in the blank. Uh, this strategy does not work. Social media does not work. Uh, funnels don't work. Paid advertising doesn't work. Uh, 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 direct messaging doesn't work. You, Facebook advertising doesn't work. I mean, you can fill in the blank with anything there. And that'd be the equivalent of me saying, well, you know, QuickBooks doesn't work or account accounting doesn't work. It's like, well, maybe your approach to the way you tried to use QuickBooks didn't get you your end result. Or maybe there's something fundamentally wrong with your accounting system that would lead you to that belief. But the idea that we're just going to throw the baby out with the bathwater and say that this strategy does not work to me is, again, it's like there's something that is preventing it from working, or maybe it's not the right strategy for the type of clients you're looking for. And that's fair. And what this normally relates to, uh, and this is really the key takeaway. And the key takeaway here is that consistency is greater than intensity, right? And this is uh, the Dunning-Kruger effect, right? Where it's like, you learn a little bit about funnels or you learn a little bit about Facebook ads and you go, this is the solution, right? Like I'm going to be able to grow my firm like crazy. And it's like, maybe. And then you learn a little bit more and then you actually get involved and then it drops dramatically. And then there's this almost like this sort of like depression that comes into play where it's like, this doesn't work. And then it's like, but if you stick with it and then all of a sudden that, that curve starts to come back into your favor, because as your knowledge expands in the strategy of marketing, client acquisition, pricing profitably, right? As it starts to expand, you start to get that confidence and ability back up, but you have to go through that little valley in the beginning where it's like, ah, why didn't this work? And that's the right question, which is 
Why didn't this work quite yet? Let's stay consistent with it. Let's understand, let's test, let's tweak. Let's continue to move forward because if we look at it from this tiny, tiny, tiny data set and we worked really hard in this tiny, 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 tiny data set, well, we had intensity, but what we need is consistency over a long period of time. And if you have consistency over a, a longer time period, a longer time horizon, your, your ability to get better results, it improves. That's just, that's the nature of life. So again, let's not look so nuanced at this moment right now. Let's look at the next quarter. Let's look at the next six months, year, two, three years. And think about the value of your client over the next three years, as opposed to what they're worth to you right here and right now. So those are our five takeaways. And if I had to just summarize them very quickly to you, number one is please control your most valuable resource, your time. Number two is uh, premium clients. Look for premium solutions. Number three is you're not one certification away from being able to take care of your clients. Number four is growth breeds growth. And number five is consistency is greater than intensity. My name is Tyler S. Clark. We have a really special Free Tool Friday coming up next week related to DreamLeads.app, our all new software solution that I'm very excited to uh, show you a little bit of behind the scenes of what's going on with that. It's origin story. So uh, be sure to check that one out. And I hope you enjoyed today's Free Tool Friday. Remember only you can make your dream firm a reality, but we are here to help you every single step of the way. Have a fantastic rest of your weekend and make the most out of those five takeaways and create your dream firm as soon as possible. Talk to you very, very soon. Have a wonderful day, everyone.